The mysterious death of six cattle found with their tongues removed, but no blood spilled. I have never seen any animal just fall over dead and no scratch mark, no pawing, no nothing. What happened to this cow is not medically possible. They find there's no heart in the chest of the animal. There's no blood in it, there's no fluid in it. You tell me, where did the heart go? Doesn't make sense with no tracks, no bloodshed on the ground. They didn't take any of the meat from the animal. What exactly is going on here? I'll never forget looking at him eye to eye and hearing him say to me, the perpetrators of these animal mutilations are creatures from outer space. In September of 1979, there was upsurge of media, newspaper, and radio headlines around the state of Colorado that the word, the operative word, back again, kept coming up in these stories about these bloodless, trackless animals. I had not been exposed. So I was starting with a blank slate. What did they mean? So nine months later, after going with an audio man and a cameraman for a month in a TV station wagon, where we went into Wyoming, through Colorado, into New Mexico, going to rancher after rancher, law enforcement after law enforcement, getting interviews about what the people were saying that they were dealing with. I had gone to see Polaroids that I knew that a sheriff up in northern Colorado had taken about 260 some photos of animal mutilations he personally had investigated. Uh, there were deputies also, but he as sheriff. And there he had laid out all of these Polaroids and we're talking about all of these bloodless, trackless cases. And I'll never forget looking at him eye to eye and hearing him say to me, I'll save you some time. The perpetrators of these animal mutilations are creatures from outer space. And I can remember feeling like I was touching some kind of an electric wire when he said that. I literally had a physical reaction through my body as I heard the sheriff say that. And when the crew and I were on the road going rancher to rancher to everybody who had anything pathologist uh, to do with animal mutilations. It took nine months, 18 hour days. There was not a break, not once for nine months. And a strange harvest, a title that seemed to me to sum it up, a harvest of an ear, eye, tongue, jaw, genitals, and rectal tissue, utter tissue in females, was being collected from each of these animals, but with no evidence that could tie it to any human venture, government or otherwise. As much evidence as I had, as many people who had done forensic examinations and are saying we have no way to do this, there was no way on this planet for anybody to take out a heart of a cow or a steer or a bull this big, a grown adult, seven by nine by 11 inches, it's huge. And there were cases when there were necropsies done on mutilated animals and there's no excisions until the person doing the necropsy and they're cutting, there's no excisions and they find there's no heart in the chest of the animal. Not only is there no heart, there's no clotted blood, there's no blood anywhere. As one veterinarian said to me, it was like I was touching dry sandpaper in the chest where the heart should have been. In another case that Sheriff Tex Graves told me about in Colorado, he said the first cow that he went on missing an ear, eye, tongue, jaw, genitals, and rectum, which is the classic. He called the vet to come out to the pasture. They did a full necropsy. It takes about four hours yep. to do one. I've been through with veterinarians in the field. And he said, I'm standing there. And the vet looks up at me after he opened up the body. And he said, don't you ever call me out on one of these again. And the sheriff puzzled, said, what, why? And he said, look, and there in the chest, no heart.
But the vet reached down with his finger and did this and brought transparent, translucent pericardium. Pericardiums are a very thin membrane that surround mammal hearts, mm -hmm. ours, cows, and on his finger showing to the sheriff. He said, look at this. This is what the heart was in. There's no blood in it. There's no fluid in it. You tell me, where did the heart go? Where is the blood that should be here? And on top of that, Sheriff, there's not a single excision in this pericardium. How do you get out a cow's heart from inside a pericardium without cutting the pericardium? And he said, that's why I refuse to stand up in front of a pack of reporters and tell them that what happened to this cow is not medically possible. What does your research and what do you believe? Who's doing this and why? No question it's a non-human operation. It's been going on in this planet probably for centuries. So it's not military? No secret oh, ops? no. This is E.T. we're oh, talking no. about now. That we, It's like weather balloons in Roswell in 1947, counter intel. They put out all kinds of crazy mm -hmm. things. No, the mutilations are being done by technologies that many, you have amazed at how many people have seen this on their own ranches. They've got a globe of something that is light in the sky. They see beams come down into their pasture, scares the out of them. They don't run out into the mm -hmm. pasture. You'd say, well, today we think of iPhones and that somebody would grab an iPhone and they would get the cow coming up and no, in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, even the 90s, no. Ranchers did not have cameras or videotape, but they sure had their eyes at three o'clock in the morning when they are waked up by a dog barking and they hear they see a beam that's coming down into the pasture. Some of the eyewitness testimonies are they see the cow being lowered and they're too scared. To, so are these cases out. still happening? Because we have the mobile phones now, so yes. is there evidence out there? To Mostly it's still in Brazil, Argentina, Bolivia, that part of the world in terms of ongoing, like what I'm talking yeah. about. But the idea that there are eyewitnesses to the beams and seeing animals go down and up and you say why wouldn't these people be believed because of the pressure of counterintelligence pushing it's paramilitary but the mantra when i was doing a strange harvest was it's disease predators or satanic cults the first person that i brought to the tv station to ask was a catholic priest in Denver, Colorado, who in his Catholic duties did exorcisms. I brought him to my office. I had laid out all of these photographs. A lot of them I'd gotten from the sheriff up in Northern Colorado, but I had a whole lot. I wasn't front loading anything. I just wanted the Catholic priest who did exorcisms because satanic cults kept being thrown around as the explanation. Just come, lay out, tell me what would this mean in exorcisms or satanic cults. And I will never forget watching that Catholic priest look at everything remaining silent. And then he turned to me and said, Linda, this has nothing to do with the satanic cult operations that I know and what I deal with. Mm -hmm. He said, there's no blood. He said in satanic cults, blood is like part of the scene. Yours are eerie because there's no blood. That was from a Catholic mm -hmm. priest right at the beginning. So disease predators and satanic cults, the government literally pushed this. And to reinforce why I know that's true, a strange harvest was broadcast to this huge audience. About two weeks after I got a telephone call one day at the station, and there was a man who introduced himself and said, my name is Lynn Lauber. I am the head of animal mutilation investigations for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Calgary. I got a copy of your television show and I wanted to call and tell you that I know that everything you have reported is true. He said, if we took our photographs and what you showed in your TV show and we mixed them up on a table, nobody would be able to tell them apart. This is the guy who's heading the RMCMP animal mutilation investigation. He said, I wondered if you could tell me, have you confirmed sometimes molars have been removed from the mouth? I said, yes. 
He said, we have two, and we have decided that was one detail and the removal of dew claws. He said, we're not reporting them. And I'm wondering if you don't report it either, we could stay in touch because we're using this as a detail to separate out copycats. So for about 15 years, I had case after case, bloodless excisions of dew claws, bloodless excisions of teeth. I had talked with Lynn Lauber after. I did not report them until about 2004, I began reporting the removal of dew claws and teeth. Mm -hmm. So I went all that time respecting what they were saying, knowing that the Royal Canadian Mounted Police agreed 100% that it was creatures from outer space to use the sheriff. And here's the kicker. When he told me that on the phone, how they agreed, I said, but sir, I have whole newspapers from Calgary in which the Royal Canadian Mounted Police are quoted as saying there is nothing to animal mutilations but a satanic cult called O, the letter O. God is my witness in quotes. This is what this man said to me. That's what we reported to the media to keep them off of our backs. So it was a complete and total lie, is what it is, mm -hmm. to be politically nice, counterintelligence explanation, to put a distance between mm -hmm. the public and the media from the investigation by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, who are telling me they know, like my documentary, that it's non-humans that are doing the mutilations. Please just tell me, why are they doing this? If we're saying it's ET, why are they coming to Earth? Why are they taking the organs uh, they're taking from the animals? What's the purpose? Two big categories. Sustenance, food, genetic harvesting to make hybrids, clones. And those two big areas, the bigger box is one man who retired from the Defense Intelligence Agency told me in December of 1999, Linda, we have proof that there have been three competing geopolitical, territorial, fighting, extraterrestrial groups, terraforming, interacting with this planet for at least 270 million years. When I said, what is the proof? He said, I can't give it to you, it's too dangerous. But he said, this planet is considered a laboratory. I've heard this from others who have retired in agencies. Earth is considered a laboratory. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.